Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Republicans have been invoking this term two-tier system of justice a lot recently. So I want to talk about what the real two-tier justice system is, where black and brown people are over-criminalized and over-incarcerated. On June 20th, Chairman Comer claimed in a committee press release, quote, the Department of Justice's charges against President Biden's son, Hunter, reveal a two-tier system of justice. From this, uh, as you see or have seen from the knockoff uh, social media site, former President Trump has also used this phrase in connection with the Hunter Biden investigation. I'd like to address the way my Republican colleagues are attempting to co-opt the phrase two-tiered justice system to make it sound like Trump and his cronies are somehow the victims here, when the reality is that the term two-tiered system of justice is meant to refer to the very real system that exists in the United States and which affects black and brown folks, not powerful former presidents and their political allies. The real two-tiered system of justice is one in which, in 2021, according to the DOJ's Bureau of Justice Statistics, the imprisonment rate for black men aged 18 and 19 was 11.6 times the rate for white males. The real two-tiered justice system is one in which, in 2021, according to those same statistics, the imprisonment rate for Native American males aged 18 and 19 was 5.1 times the rate for white males. The two-tier justice system is one in which, according to a May 2018 Vera Evidence Brief, and I quote, black men comprise about 13% of the male population, but about 35% of those incarcerated. One in three black men born today can expect to be incarcerated in his lifetime, compared to one in six Latino men and one in 17 white men. The two-tiered justice system is one in which an analysis of nearly 100 million traffic stops across this country found that black drivers were about 20% more likely to be stopped than white drivers. My Republican colleagues seem to think that using criminal law as a weapon or a political tool is objectionable only when directed against someone who should be out of reach of the criminal system, someone too rich, too powerful, or too white to be charged. But let's face it. That same system has been used as a weapon and a political tool against black people since the Emancipation Proclamation. These racial disparities are rooted in a two-tiered view on race. The belief that black people were inferior that was created to justify the, ensla the enslavement of black people, which has now evolved into, to include the belief that black people are more prone to criminality. During the decades of lynchings that followed enslavement, white people defended the torture and murder of black people as necessary to protect property, families, and a way of life from black criminals. In the 1980s, Nixon's war on crime evolved into Reagan's war on drugs, and we saw harsher and more frequent punishments in the start of mass incarceration. In both cases, it was black people who were targeted and suffered under those policies. There's a reason that crack cocaine, which carries a stereotype of being used by black people, was at one point punished far more harshly than powder cocaine. Prior to 2010, that ratio was 100 to 1, meaning someone convicted in a federal court of possessing crack cocaine will receive the same sentence as someone who possessed 100 times more powder cocaine. And I want to say that PA's extreme sentencing practices have overwhelmingly impacted people of color, but most specifically black people who make up less than 11% of the population in Pennsylvania, but more than 65% of those serving life without parole sentences and 58% of those serving non-life sentences of 20 years or longer. How many times have our elected officials and judges ran on a promise of a tough on crime approach? Even now, Republicans still tell that they are the party of law and order, while in the same breath claiming that Donald Trump should not uh, be prosecuted. Don't get it twisted. Republican efforts, efforts to use the term two-tier justice is to distract from those who are truly the victims of a disparate treatment in our criminal justice system. And whether we say it out loud or not, we all know who those people are. I yield uh, the remainder of my time to uh, the ranking member. Thank you, Ms. Lee, for that very eloquent statement. I just, I wonder if you remember, you might be too young for this, but when there was this horrific assault, a, a gang rape in Central Park, Donald Trump um, ran uh, ads in the New York Times saying that the Central Park um, uh, suspect should be given the death penalty, and of course they turned out to be completely innocent 
uh, of the offense. So I think that's just to reinforce your point. There's a history of profound racism in the criminal justice system and in the rhetoric uh, around it. And there's something very disappointing about our colleagues co-opting, as you say, and prostituting the critique of the system as two-tiered on behalf of Donald Trump. I yield back to you. Chair recognize Mr. Grofman from Wisconsin for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this important hearing. I found it interesting that of the 12 witnesses